welcome and thank you for joining us for CBU's second virtual last watch here. My name is Tal Law. I'm a senior biochemistry major and a board of director member for the CBU Honors Program. I cannot believe a year has already passed since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. During this time, I am proud to see the resilience of the CBU community while following COVID-19 guidelines, such as consistently wearing our face mask and social distancing from one another and getting vaccinated. I hope that everyone has been staying happy, healthy, and safe throughout the school year. Despite the uncertainty and challenges that we're still facing right now, we want to strive to keep our CBU traditions alive. Several members of the CBU community have been working hard to ensure that the CBU last lecture is one of those traditions. As you may know, a last lecture is an event where a university asks one of its beloved professors to share meaningful insights that he or she has acquired from years of teaching and learning with the entire CBU community, as though it would be the individual's last opportunity to do so. This year's speaker is Dr. Pong. We are confident that his talk will remind all of us of what a special place CBU is to all of us. Since we cannot host this event in Spain Auditorium as we normally would, I hope that you have found a comfortable spot wherever you are to hear from Dr. Pong. Here to introduce Dr. Pong is my friend Grace von Bachmann, another Board of Director member of the CBU Honors Program. As Tao said, my name is Grace von Bachmann and I am here to introduce Dr. Pong. Dr. Pong joined CBU in the fall of 1988 as Associate Professor in Civil Engineering. He has served the university in many capacities, including Dean of the School of Engineering. Additionally, he started the packaging program at CBU in 2001 and currently oversees the Bachelors of Science in Engineering Management. His packaging students have become successful in their careers working for several global companies, including FedEx, Smith & Nephew, International Paper, GSK, and ABB. His professional accomplishments include professional engineer in the state of Tennessee, certified packaging laboratory professional, certified packaging professional, Lean Six Sigma black belt professional, and editor-in-chief of the International Journal of Advanced Packaging Technology. In addition to Dr. Pong's many accomplishments, he is a love professor on campus. In my four years of, a of being a student at CBU, there has never been a semester where I have not heard wonderful things about him from students and faculty. Today, he is going to discuss what is more important than knowledge, the ability to shape your future as a student. Without further ado, here is Dr. Pong with the 14th annual CBU Last Lecture. It is an honor to be invited to give a last lecture talk. At first, I almost did not accept the invitation because of the last lecture title for two reasons. Number one, I love teaching and want to continue teaching to uh, my students. Uh, certainly, I do not want to give this talk as my last lecture. Second, I have had two doses of Pfizer vaccination as part of CDC Phase 1C vaccination eligibility, so I do not plan to die anytime soon, at least not from COVID. After giving it a thought overnight, I felt that this talk would be a good opportunity for me to share my experience in working with students over the years. If only one student or one faculty member benefit from my talk today, it is worth the effort. By the way, I told my students not to look at the notes when giving a presentation. Instead, they need to look at the audience. One thing I did not tell them, however, was there are some exceptions. When you are in phase 1C vaccination eligibility list, you can look at your notes during the presentation. This is due to what we call senior moment. You will understand this when you are in your 60s. Senior moment happened to me more frequently in the last few years. From time to time, I need to stop my lecture since I forgot what I was about to say. So today I have my notes in front of me and they are in big front size, 24 to be exact. Okay, let's start with my background. I joined CBU in 1988, a long time ago, as associate professor in civil engineering. I often 
joke with my students that I am more Memphian than they are. I asked them, where were you in 1988? This really confused some students. Since it goes over that time span, you know, students 18 to 22 years old, they have this long of time span. I came to CBU long before that time span start. And when I told my age, it's over that time span on the other side. So confused some students. I taught fathers of some students, and more recently, I even know grandparents of a few students. What I'm trying to tell you is that I have many years of experience. In the past several years, I have worked with students who want to study engineering, but their math background is somewhat weak. In fact, it's not their fault. Perhaps their high school were not strong in math. Perhaps they did not have good math teacher. So I created a class called Engineering 100 for them. In this class, I cover some basic math from algebra to introduction to calculus. This student need help in math. I see intelligence and potential in many of them. I often tell them that they don't have to be a math genius to become successful. I also work with another group of students in engineering management with packaging concentration. The program has a good blend of math, science, engineering, business, and general education. I work closely with this group of students by not only teaching them, but also serving as their faculty advisor. Some of them fail from other engineering programs which requires more math skill. Some change their major to engineering management with an inferior feeling. This has led me to develop ways to motivate them, to build them up their confidence. Many become successful in their career. Some global company hire several hour graduates from this program. We must have done something right that this company keep coming back for more graduates. In my talk today, I will share with you some of the things I have used with this student. Okay, number one, developing full potential in students. Many of us often create our own limitation. We were taught from very young that we should not do certain things. Thus, we think inside a box. I often tell my class a story of elephant training. When an elephant is still a baby elephant, the trainer ties it to a small cable <clears throat> to a stake on the ground. The baby elephant does not have enough strength to pull the stake or break the cable. Thus, it can only walk in a circle day after day. When it grows up to be a powerful elephant, it still walks in the same circle. It does not know that it can pull the stake out from the ground or break the cable. The trainer eventually removed the cable. It still walks in the same circle. I tell my students that they have more ability than they think they have. I love to tell stories in my class. Some are just pure jokes. I tell some jokes at the beginning of some classes. Students love my joke, so they do not come to class late. During lecture, I usually scan my students. Uh, I can tell when I lose them from their eyes. I would stop the lecture and tell them a joke. By the way, redneck joke has been their favorite. If you want to listen to that redneck joke, you can take my Engineering 100 or Packaging 101 class, and you cannot be from Arkansas. In the past year, I have taught classes either asynchronous online or live WebEx lecture. I do not see students in person often as I used to 
before the pandemic. I have not told joke lately. Okay, point number two. Number two, making students think about their future. Some students do not think very far into their future. They go on their life without a clear direction. In my freshman class, I often tell students what companies are looking for in job candidates, GPA, work experience, people skills, leadership, character, etc. I require them to submit their resume as part of assignments. They need to build up their resume from freshman year. They can see their strengths, their weaknesses from the resume. Resume is a good tool for them to shape up their future. When I work on project with students, I tell them to meet in a lab at certain time. I often compliment those who are on time. I often tell those who are late that they would not get a good recommendation letter from me when they look for a job. I tell them when they do internship, they must be on time. If they cannot go to work as scheduled, they need to let their supervisor know. This shapes up their character for the future. In one freshman class four or five years ago, students did not pay attention to my lecture. I stopped my lecture and asked the class to think about their future four or five years down the road. They could be a professional working for a major company, making 55000 to 65000 starting salary, or as a checkout clerk at grocery store at a minimum wage. I'm trying to let them think about their future. Since then, they listened to my lecture. Okay, number three, being innovative. I want my students to be innovative. That is how they would stand out. I show them an item such as this one. Okay, I pass them around and some students didn't know what this one is. Okay, and uh, I asked them three questions. The first question, what is it? Somebody knows so they know what it is. Some try to figure out what it is for. After hearing their response, uh, I tell them what it is. Like this one actually is a cell phone stand, okay? And some never use that, so they have no idea what it, what it is. So the next question, or the second question, why is it designed that way? There got to be a reason why they're doing this, why they have to fold it this way, why they have to have a slot over here, okay, on and on. There got to be some reason. And for this uh, phone stand, a lot of students, they don't really know what are these two side flap is about. What are they for? The, most of these are freshmen. They haven't taken like mechanic class for me yet. So, but this one actually, when you do this, if it slid, I don't know, when you can see, it strengthens that so it's stronger. It won't bend. It serves as like a cantilever beams uh, over here. Sorry, I'm an engineer, so I use engineering term. Okay, but if you don't have this, you have it flat out. You can see this one can bend a lot. Okay, so we discussed about that, why they do this one this way. This makes the, them think deeper. After the discussion, I asked them the last question. What would you do to make it better? or cheaper. They say you like this product, you want to get into that market. You can be competitive by either having a better product or have a cheaper product, or both better and cheaper. This makes them think even deeper. This, questions, this question leads to innovative idea. So I have a couple of this uh, example that I use in my freshman class. Now, something can be very simple. Uh, for example, everyone, all students nowadays, they have cell phone. But the question, we don't have to ask what is it. They already know. 
they have in their pocket, they have in their hands. But then I ask them the second question, why they do it the way, uh, the way like this? Why it has to be a flat? You know, when the first cell phone came out, at the time most phone out there is like a stick. Okay, whoever come out with the idea, whether Steve Jobs or at Apple, they come up with the idea of flat. It has something unique, innovative idea. So we discuss about that. So students, they have some idea. Uh, it can be anything. We have, I have about five, four, five different examples that I discuss in class. Now, one student in one class who had a very weak math skill had a lot of innovative idea when we discussed these three questions. She always raised her hand and gave some great idea. I told her in front of the class, you will be successful in the future. Your idea would lead to innovative products. You don't have to know math and engineering principle to make them happen. You can hire someone else to do it. But the idea is yours. Okay, innovative idea. Okay, number four, building up confidence. I mentioned earlier that some of my students fell out from other programs and felt inferior. One way I have found useful building up their confidence is to get them involved with some research project. When I published the work, they were co-author of that publication. They have their name on publication. I also have collaborated with an online publisher, Cloud Publication, on PacCon since 2015. PacCon is an, an online packaging magazine. A magazine article does not have to be an original research work. I assign students in my packaging classes to select a packaging-related topic of their interest. Read about the topic from various sources and then blend what they learn into a magazine article. I edit its content. And our TAPI student chapter has a student editor who edits the language usage. We publish about 20 articles a year, four articles at a time. The most recent four articles were published in March of this year. Students are proud to see their work published. They become somebody. They become famous. Some share their published article with their family members, with friends. I also promote this article on social media. I have witnessed changes in some students. They feel more confident. A list of publications make their resume stronger. When I finish my PhD, I did not even have a publication on my resume. Some of my undergraduate students had several publications on their resume by the time they graduated. That's really impressive. Number five, straight talk. I like to have a straight talk with students. One student did not perform well in classes. I'm her advisor. In one class, I noticed that she looked at her laptop in the back row, back seat. She did not pay attention to my lecture. A day or two after that, I met her on campus. I told her, the other day you did not pay attention to my lecture. That is why you have failed several courses. It was a short conversation, and she turned around since then. Later, she told me after that encounter, she cries and told her mom that day that she would delete all the social media apps from her phone. Now, she has a great job with a global company and a great salary, quite successful. This is similar to what I said earlier about what I said to students who came in late to a lab session. You will not get a good recommendation letter from me when you look for a job. That's an example of straight talk. I talk in front of other students. 
another student. She was a very shy girl. She had never said a word in class. One day I told her in front of the class that she would need to ask question. I knew later on from her friend that she cried. However, she has turned into a very confident person. Some students need to have someone straight talk to them to wake them up. They know my intention that I want them to become a better person. Number six, lifelong learning. <clears throat> lifelong learning is a skill to develop. Knowledge students learn from class today may be obsolete in the future. Most students forget what they learn from class anyway. Several years ago, I came across a former student who was in my engineering mechanics class years ago. He told me, Dr. Pong, I could not remember what you taught me in that mechanics class. However, I remember the story you told me that you will never know story. Okay, I told that to the class when he attended that class. When I was civil engineering department chair at CBU here, I invited civil engineers to share their experience with our civil engineering seniors. One speaker who is our graduate told our senior, you will only use about 5% of what you learn in college. However, you don't know which 5% you will need. There are a couple of ways, couple of ways I have used to develop lifelong learning skill in my student. One of them is internship. Internship is required in our engineering management packaging concentration program. Students need to understand that learning is not only from college classes. Learning from work is valuable and practical. In addition, internship train our students on people skill, especially the ability to work with others. I also encourage my students to participate in other career-related events hosted by our career services, including externship. Another way I have used is professional certification. In our engineering management packaging concentration program, students are required to pass a two-hour exam given by the International Safe Transit Association, or ISTA, in order to graduate. When a student passes the exam, he or she becomes an ISTA certified packaging lab technician. Students need to understand that being certified helps their career and gives them recognition. Since this certification is a graduation requirement, some students had to take it more than once. They cannot give up, otherwise they will not graduate. I have also encouraged students to pursue other certification, including Lean Six Sigma Yellow Belt Certification, Certified Packaging Professional in Training Certification, and OSHA 10 hour general industry safety certification. This certification developed their lifelong learning habit. They also, also lead them to internship and full-time job. Number seven, continuous improvement. I encourage my students to do their best. They should be better every day. Always learn new knowledge. More than half of our BS in engineering management packaging concentration graduates have pursued their graduate study at various universities, including our Master of Science in Engineering Management. In fact, one graduate will start her PhD program this coming fall. They simply want to be better. Number eight, understanding your student. It is important that professors understand their students. When I was a student in college, 
in the early 70s, I studied full time. I did not have to work. Many of my students now work long hours to survive. Some are raised with a single parent. They do not have enough time to study. In the past year, the pandemic makes things worse for many students. We need to understand them and try to help them as much as possible. They say, students do not care how much professors know until they know how much the professors care. Professors now wear many hats as a teacher, mentor, advisor, supporter, etc. We need to understand student. If a student misses, miss, misses a class or does not turn in an assignment, the student might have other challenges in life. I usually ask them if there is anything I can help. I like to work with students in lab. It is a small group setting. I have opportunity to work with them while we work on projects. I get to know them better. I also like to take students out on field trip. I have opportunities to talk to three to four stu students who ride with me in my car. I get to know them better and they get to know me better as well. I'm a human being, I'm not just a teacher. Number nine, hands-on learning. I have found that hands-on learning is a very effective way to learn. Students also have opportunity to practice teamwork skills because we work in a group. Before the pandemic, I integrated hands-on lab experiment in several courses to enhance course material. During the pandemic, I have developed a synchronous online material for several courses. When we return to in-person class, classes after pandemic, I plan to use less time lecturing and spend more time with hands-on projects. Students learn material from asynchronous online material. I plan to use class time for discussion and hands-on projects. Hands-on learning is fun. Number 10, being a role model. When I started our packaging program several years ago, I knew very little about packaging. My training and experience were in civil engineering, not in packaging. I learned packaging from guest speaker in my packaging seminar class. Basically, I learned some material along with my student. I have also learned about packaging from research project, also along with my student. I also study for certification exam before I require or encourage my student to take a certification exam. I did it first. My message to my student is, if I can do it, you can do it. Okay. I have no background in packaging and you don't have background packaging, but I can do it, you can do it too. We all can learn. Students look, look for role models, someone who inspire them. I want to be like that person in the future. They look at professor, they look at professional, at companies they intern with. For professor, we need to be the best we can be if we want our student to become the best they can be. Nah. To sum up my talk, for students to become successful in the future, it goes beyond the knowledge they learn in school. After all, they must have a desire to become successful. Thus, motivation is the key. One of my spiritual teachers told me, I can give, I can show you the way, but you have to walk the path by yourself. I hope some of the method I mentioned today will be beneficial to some, both students and faculty. Thank you for listening.
Thank you, Dr. Pong, for your amazing presentation and for your commitment and dedication to teaching with the Lasallian spirit. Thank you also to Kyle Prapura for uh, assisting and helping us record this program today. Thank you also to the viewers for taking the time out of your day to uh, watch this program. And uh, I hope you walk away today learning some new ways to make your aspirations a reality for the future. And also to the students, I hope that you are reminded of your unlimited potential to shape your future. Mm -hmm.